In this video, we're going to help you avoid five common mistakes when building an app for the first time, because you could end up spinning your wheels with an app that's never released if you continue to focus on the wrong things. This will instead help you focus on the right priorities to get your app out there. Let's start by addressing the exploratory research part of your application. When you're just getting started with your app, you're going to have a ton of ideas swirling around in your head, and you're going to want to tackle them all. I don't blame you. It's really exciting to create something new. But there is a time and a place for this exploration phase, and you want to make sure that you don't get stuck in it during your actual development. Exploratory research should focus on the problem, pain points, and desired outcomes. These are the core drivers of your app and should be figured out before development because they're going to help you define a plan. If you don't have a clear roadmap to follow during development, you can easily get lost or end up chasing features that don't actually matter. The last thing you want to be doing is overhauling your plan as you build. This can lead to a significantly delayed launch, an overdone app, and even lost motivation on your part. Once you've first identified and really understood your market's problem, pain points, and desired outcomes, you can then focus on coming up with a solution. The solution is made up of the features you'll build to help solve those problems and get your users closer to those desired outcomes. For example, let's say you want to build an HR management tool for offices. This is the kind of app that can be loaded with features like employee management, payroll, timesheets, training, handbooks, manager reviews, and more, right? This is a total solution for all things employee administration. This is also the kind of app that can go way overboard with things like inter-office messaging, job boards, and company financial reports, features that could frankly be entire applications on their own. Now, your ultimate goal may in fact be to have this powerhouse of an application with all of the functionality needed to run a company, but resist the urge to take it on all at once at the start. Focus on one problem and address the features for that first. Are you wanting to help companies recruit new employees more easily, or are you wanting to help them process payroll faster? Those are two very different problems that require two very different solutions. The moment you split your focus, you're now going to have to juggle a bigger test group who will value things differently. If you're just not sure which one you want to address first, the last thing you want to do is start building. You must have a clear objective. Keep talking to your target market to see which is the bigger pain point or the pain point you're most motivated to address first. Do not continue researching after you've come up with a solution. Either stay in the exploratory mode or go and build your product with that focus plan so you can test your theory. The next common mistake is not actually building an MVP. You want to make sure that the first version of your application is truly a minimum viable product. Another way you can think about this is as the earliest testable product. This can quickly move into the earliest usable product than the earliest lovable product. These small iterations of viability are all focused on one thing, feedback. Early user feedback is the most valuable goal for you right now because it will help you identify quickly what's working and what isn't long before you spend more time, energy, and resources into building something no one will ever use or need. So how do you draw that line for yourself? How do you know if you've started building too much for an MVP? Think of it this way. Above all else, you should first solve a problem. Don't worry about how things look or even about converting your entire market quite yet. There's a classic example for visualizing the evolution of an MVP by comparing it to a simplified evolution of transportation. So the problem is moving from A to B is too slow. The solution is get on wheels to move faster. The MVP here for this solution is a skateboard, right? A board on wheels, though incredibly simple, is still solving our problem. We can actually get from A to B faster compared to walking and even running since it's saving us energy. Great, our solution is validated. The next iteration of this is a bike. The mechanics are a bit more refined, perhaps more comfortable, still simple, but the core solution, right, the wheels, are still there. Then we have a motorcycle. Okay, so now we've introduced an engine. This is something more people may love and pay for on a consistent basis because we're significantly increasing the distance we can travel while also decreasing the physical exertion on our bodies. It just keeps getting better. Finally, we have the car. Now we're looking at comfort, personalization, and massive scale possibilities here. This evolution takes the core solution and, through iterations, improves it one piece at a time. One iteration may be focused on speed, another on mechanics, another on distance, and another on comfort. 
Approach your app the same way. Your iterations don't need to tackle everything all at once. Think about things like performance, usability, automation, convenience, personalization, etc. as separate goals when addressing improvements. You may be surprised how much one may influence another. So what can we take away from this? Well, you want to avoid building the car first. If you start to build beyond the solution before getting any feedback, you can easily overwork yourself and overwork the app. Your development journey really should be a series of build feedback loops. This way you can stay focused and you can build a product that keeps getting better and better over time as efficiently as possible. Hey, real quick, if you are finding this helpful and you know you want to build your app on Bubble quickly, correctly, and in a way that scales, our other founders are doing so right now using our Fast Track course. The Fast Track course has been designed to cut months off your development time and keep you from having to rebuild your app later on. So check it out if you're looking for a structured, process-driven approach. I have the link on the screen right now, and I'm also going to put it in the description below so that you can take a look. The next thing you want to avoid is not knowing your app's value proposition. When asked what the value of the app idea is, most people will start listing off the features. It can do this, it can do that, check out how cool this part is. That is not the value proposition. The value of your app is not the list of features. It's the outcome your app is enabling for someone. For example, the value in an app that helps service-based businesses send invoices, schedule clients, and receive payments isn't in the invoice generator, the calendar, or the checkout page. No, instead, the value is that it helps service-based businesses get paid and save employees time in managing their work. Or consider an app that helps lawyers generate contracts. This type of app could offer templates, version histories, different ways of sending files to clients, and even legally binding e-signatures. When talking about the value, the users want to be assured that this app will help them create contracts fast and reliably to help them close deals and or move forward in cases swiftly. If that is the outcome they get, they'll keep coming back. They'll pay for this solution because it's actually helping them in their own business. If the app, on the other hand, was bloated with vanity features like a logo editor or gamification, then users will become more skeptical of the app really understanding their true needs. At the end of the day, these businesses will always care more about achieving these outcomes and less about the tool that got them there. The outcome will always outrank the tool because what's the point of a fancier tool if it's not actually going to solve the problem? For another example, think about an app that helps people find and book vacation rentals. The value isn't the notification feed or the image galleries. The value is that it helps people easily book vacations in a few simple clicks. Use that value statement to help guide the right features that will solve the problems, like a search with important filters that make finding the right listings a lot faster. If you get your value proposition right, if you truly understand it, it'll help you prioritize the right solution-oriented features while also making it easier to find the right users. Next, be careful not to confuse an MVP with a market-ready app. An MVP is not the thing that's going to build your monthly recurring revenue. Instead, the MVP is going to help you confirm one way or another, whether your proposed solution is accurate. And you can do this with a closed group of test users. Here's an example for a financial tracking application. The MVP for this app lets early users import a limited batch of transactions to test the graphical visualizations, the reporting functions, and account management. All they need from this app is a way to easily review their finances in an organized way, so that they can gather the insights they need to make important financial decisions. This is a tool to help support life decisions. As long as they can get that data, the MVP is doing its job. A market-ready version of this app lets users connect to their bank accounts with a secure integration. That way, transactions can come in automatically in real time. A market-ready version will also handle edge cases in how the transactions are automatically categorized. A market-ready version can also support higher volumes of data, right? So the market-ready version is obviously still addressing the core issues, but now it's in a more productized state that users are willing to use in real scenarios because it's gonna be more reliable for them, more scalable. If you confuse an MVP with a market-ready app, you are more likely to spend much more time building features that have too many assumptions tied to them. You have to test your theories and test them often. 
keep in mind that it's not the number of features that will give your app value. It's whether or not it solves a certain problem. Solve the problem and get that validation first before you continue adding more features. Remember, Facebook was a closed social network when it first came out. Its first goal was to serve as a directory. That's it. It was only available to college students with limited functionality and design compared to the massive digital ecosystem it is today. Today, it has real-time messaging, games, marketplaces, live streaming, and more. And that evolution happened over a couple decades alongside the evolution of how people communicated online. All of those extra features would have been completely irrelevant at the start. Now, let's talk about scope creep. You probably heard this term quite a bit within the app space. It is a very important thing to be aware of in the early versions of your application. You don't want to build too many features too soon. Now, a lot of people also creep within the features as well and don't even realize they're doing this. This also qualifies as scope creep. Feature creep is taking your MVP features and making them too complex or too redundant for an MVP. For example, a social network doesn't need 10 different ways to create a post. A booking application doesn't need 10 different custom booking options. Think of it this way. An MVP solves a core problem. So let's use a marketplace as an example where service providers are getting connected to consumers. From beta to rollout, the MVP should be solving that problem consistently. Okay, so in this stage, we need to make sure our marketplace's search functionality is reliably displaying accurate search results to the consumers. This is what they're here for, after all. It needs to have public profiles for the service providers so consumers can see their website and learn about specific services offered. This way, consumers can confidently move forward with their first appointment. It also needs to reliably schedule their first appointment, and both sides are sent confirmations. All right, so then from rollout to scale, the MVP should be solving the problem consistently better. So for our marketplace, our search feature can now allow consumers to save past searches. The service provider profiles can accept a gallery of images to showcase past work. And the scheduling system can accept requested dates and times from the consumer. The app overall may introduce a few shortcuts from various menus to move around the screens faster. All of these features are enhancements to the core. They allow for more personalization, which makes things more relevant to the user, solving the problem better. Now, from scale and beyond, the app should solve the problem for more and more people. In our marketplace, that usually means starting out in one limited and controlled geographic region and then opening it up to more locations, thus expanding that user base. This phase can also introduce a companion app for service providers so that they can track their work. These kinds of features are only relevant and appropriate to build once you're past those initial foundational steps. Most people try to build their MVP in the consistently better stage. That's two to three versions beyond where you should start though. If you're giving your users multiple ways to accomplish the exact same task, you're overbuilding. I've always recommended with our own clients to make more decisions for their users in the early stages of the app, rather than giving them multiple pathways to the same solution. You're overcomplicating it for no reason if you do that. The more focus you keep things at the start, the easier it will be for you to build a reliable baseline that you can go out and test with. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, the content you're about to see on the next screen will help you take things even further.